G'day folks, welcome back to another episode, Young Nomad style of course, and I hope whatever you're doing, you're well, you're healthy, you're happy, but more importantly, you're living free. So as you can see, the tinny is hooked on to the Land Cruiser, water behind me, and on this episode, we're gonna take you on a little fishing session. It's a midweek getaway, Wednesday, and uh, today we're at a little place called Stansbury. Done a lot of land-based fishing here. Stayed at the local caravan park, which is right on the waterfront there. If you haven't been to the Stansbury Caravan Park, get on it, awesome spot. The only thing, they don't allow dogs. So uh, we've stayed there, but unfortunately without our four-legged four loved ones. But today we're getting out. I've caught plenty of squid off ground here from Stansbury through to Klein's Jetty. Some of you watching may know of the place called Armchair. So that's kind of the ground we're gonna be stalking today for squid. And uh, conditions aren't too bad. We're looking at around about eight knots easterly. Easterly on this side of the peninsula is onshore. But as you can see, it's not too bad. Seas are about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a metre at, at its highest point. But with the ground here, you don't have to go too far offshore. So uh, top of 14 degrees, it's pretty fresh, I'll be honest. Um, it's the coldest day of the week, but it's the calmest day of the week. So any opportunity when the weather guides line up, get out there, wet a line, tight lines, and hopefully we'll share a good squid uh, session with you guys on this episode. So whatever you're doing, kick back, relax. We're about to drop the tinny into the water and uh, let's get underway. Solo session. Um, and hopefully we get onto some good old calamari. All right, here we go, folks, enjoy. Guys, we're on to a squid here. So we pushed out to uh, armchair, but yeah, it was very cloudy and murky out there. It wasn't that good a condition, unfortunately. Uh, we're gonna double header it. We're both on here. Both are on. So yeah, just drifting, came in a bit closer to Stansbury. And uh, we're in about two meters of water. A bit bumpy. The old really weather prediction and forecast is uh, about a, a metre on what it really is. Alright, that's one. We're on another one here. Oh, this one feels like it's got a bit more weight to it. Hopefully you guys can see. I haven't put, I haven't even put the GoPro on the uh, GoPro mount. I've just come here and started drifting straight away. Oh no, a little bit bigger than the last one. Wait to it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, look at that. Calamari tonight, baby. Yeah. I kid you not, I literally just cast this one in, set the rod, and straight away it went off. Similar size again. Thank you. 
right. Well, so far so good. Three cars, three squid. So far that little new one I bought from the boys sports fishing scene. Big shout out to the lads. That one seems to be uh, two from two. Pink and orange ones doing the trick, eh? It's a smaller one, this one. just had him on. Got the net there too. Should have grabbed the net. Haven't had a chance to uh, even put these ones in the esky as yet and just getting smashed at the moment. Now walk back out she goes. So pretty much with drifting for squid guys it's pretty straightforward easy going, it's quite relaxing because you don't have to do a lot of work. Um, but essentially, what I do is I use a float such as this, and then you jag obviously at the bottom of your line, and you just tie this float off to the depth that you want to get your jag as close to the ground or the weed, but obviously without touching. So what I do is I use my sounder. At the moment, we're in two meters of water. So then what I'll make sure I do is I'll make sure the length from this float down to the jag is going to be about about 1.6, 1.7 metres. So that way I'm at least a good three, 400 mils off the ground. Um, obviously you've got to allow as the tide and the wind pushes you on into the shore, obviously it starts to get shallower and shallower. So um, that's what works for me. And it's just simply cast, kick back, relax, have a feed, a cold drink, and uh, wait for the squid to hit the jag. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below as to what uh, successful squid setups that you love to use, whether it's uh, drifting, whether it's um, anchored up or land base. Let us know what's your favorite uh, squid, squid rig in the comments below. Look forward to uh, reading them and seeing your ideas around how you go squidding. Well, I jinxed myself. We had three from three casts. I've now had two more casts and nothing so far. But it's the game of patience fishing and he or she that is the most patient will absolutely catch the most. The other little tip I'll give you with squidding that I find that it just increases my chances of getting on. Um, but I use this um, Glomax spray. It's a scented spray. Um, it's uh, the Nature Bite series. Um, it's not cheap, the can. I think it's about 15 or 20 bucks I paid for it. Again, from Sports Fishing Scene, the local boys there on Port Wakefield Road Cabin. Um, but I just spray a little bit of that on the jag every dozen casts or so, um, just to put some scent out there. And I just find it increases my conversion and my strike rates. Um, I've literally had sessions where I've used this stuff and I've got almost a dozen, if not more, squid back to back on every car so um, just about increasing your chances we burly for fish often well it's the same here using some scent to just draw those uh, squid and entice them a little bit more to come out of their natural habitat and uh, hit the jag not just reliant on the color of the jag the jag that I've got out there at the moment I've got one that is a rattler and one that's not Again, that pink and orange one I showed you that's had the most hit so far, that is the Rattler. So it seems that colour, uh, combined with being the Rattler and a bit of scent, uh, that one seems to be the most popular one so far. But let's see. It is 11.55am. Uh, I did push, as I said, a little bit wider 
towards Armchair where I fish lamb base uh, for squid quite often and do quite well off there but yeah the water was just really murky around there whereas here back towards the oysters of Stansbury um, it's quite clear we're only in two meters of water but I can see quite clearly to the ground um, I just find the clearer the water is, the better I've generally done squidding. I've never really done any well, any good when the water's been quite murky. Um, but again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. What conditions do you prefer when it comes time to squidding? And by the bend of the rod, this could be our biggest one of the day so far. Had some pull in it. Seem to be getting on as I get a little bit closer into the shore, to be honest with you, but got that one in it. Yeah, about a 1.8 meters of water. Nah, not that big. Deceiving. Fought hard at the beginning. Backed off. But the wife will be happy. We're having calamari and chips tonight. You'll be all tea. So this one's the non rattler. I'll show you this jag in a moment. Oh, it's only babe. Yeah, pretty small this one. But anyway. Oh, it's only just hooked on, I tell you. I'll use the net this time. Be safe. All right. So you can see, that's the non-rattler. Beautiful color though. I got that one because, um, three and a half gram, but I got that one because it almost looks like a pilchard. So, and I've always done well with uh, a pilchard or a soury. Onto something like that. So I thought, you know what? I'll try the hard body jag that looks like a, a, a pilly as well. Beautiful colors though, love it. So it's just got that beautiful reflection piece up the top there as well. So. All right, let's get this one back out there. Oh yep, we're on here, only a small one. So now I've just push, pushed out a little bit deeper this time, 2.6 metres of water. Put the old scent on, first cast, Bob's your uncle. That's a perfect Mulloway bait right there. Or Kingy. We're gonna be hitting the Kingies in October, so stay tuned for that episode, because that's gonna be one epic session, hopefully. We've got a whole group of us heading down to Port Augusta. We've hired out a couple of holiday houses and uh, four days, or three, four days there, but obviously travel time, so three full days fishing, and that'll be one great, trip that I'm really looking forward to. Um, caught a few kings in my time, generally just pups though, so if we could get that illustrious 30, 40 kilo kingy, oh man, that would be un unbelievable. Pound for pound, the hardest fighting fish, I reckon. And that would be the perfect bait right now for a kingy on a downrigger. Wouldn't get any better than that, perfect size. All right, let's get this one in the bag get the jag back out there. Well, it's just gone a little bit quiet for the moment. We are at pretty much the bottom of the tide. So the tide's about to push in. It's now 20 to one. But yeah, obviously less tidal movement, less activity I generally find with squid. Again, I don't know how you folks find it when squidding. Do you prefer um, tidal movement? How do you go? Do you get them on the bottom of the tide? I haven't had any luck on the bottom of the tide or the top of the tide. Generally when it's the um, in-between transitioning tide, when there's movement, I seem to do better with squid. But drop in the comments how you guys go. I guess if they're there, they're there, hey? If there's pod there, they're there. I 
I'm spewing because I've just seen a dolphin also swim past and it's always the way the GoPro is off and probably explains why it's a little bit quiet at the moment when a beautiful little dolphin just went swimming through. Um, for those that may have not have seen the previous episode of Wyala, um, feel free to watch it because about halfway through that one, about the 15 minute mark I think, um, I have an amazing encounter with uh, a dolphin, um, a mother dolphin and its pup. So be sure to check it out because it was something that I will cherish and remember for the rest of my life. Having a dolphin come right up to the boat with her pup and I literally hand fed it a sour. It was just such a surreal experience. I can't explain. I was speechless. I was almost in tears. That's how touching it was. Such beautiful, elegant creatures. Um, and the way that they just move through the water effortless. So, anyway, we're in about 1.6 metres of water now. Almost at the point where I've got to push back out. Probably a couple more drifts. I think we've got about half a dozen in the bag. That's plenty for tonight's dinner. And uh, see if we can maybe get a bit more for some squid. I generally like to squid. Uh, quite heavily during sort of pretty much now August, September, October. Um, try and get as much bait as I can in the freezer. Squid obviously per kilo, it's not cheap. I think you're paying about 18 or 20 bucks a kilo. To be honest, it probably costs me more in diesel to get down here to York Peninsula two hours away. But hey, it's all about the experience, the journey, and uh, you can't put a dollar value per kilo when you're out catching. But yeah, I like to have the freezer stocked up with bait. Um, by about October so that we're ready to hit the mully season come November, December, January, February. Uh, squid is one of my favourite baits for mully, mullies uh, as it is for most mully fishermen. Um, I love sauries as well. Sauries go really good, all the combination a sauri with squid. Um, all good stuff. Anyway, I'll pull these ones in and we'll head back out and do another drift. And hopefully with the tide now pushing in, we'll start to see a little bit more action. The tide's starting to push in now. We're on. Now this is the pilchard looking one that I showed you before. I reckon this one's overtaken the orange and pink one now. I reckon this one's about one or two up on the other one. Only a small one. Again, it's probably just a bait size one, this one again. Me good. Oh well. It's all part of fishing, eh? Being inked. The smell, the scent. I'll just see if there was that. There's another little one behind it. It's amazing how good the uh, polarised make a difference. Take them off, can't see the bottom really. Put them on. Oh yep, here's one coming up right behind it now. Looks like a good size one too. Here we go. Suspicious this one, bit spooked. Yeah. It's a good size one too, that one. Sometimes when you squid and it pays just to have a spare jag at the ready 
because often when you pull up one, a couple of others will often follow it as well. So if you've got a spare jag, as you're pulling in the one you've got on, you can just bob another jag behind it and generally get double hook up. <laughs> nah, he's not keen to take it. Alright. We'll put a bit of the old scenty scenty on. So here we go. been that one that was sort of following this up we've now drifted a fair bit from where we landed that one so try not to get inked this time around eh Just a real humane thing to do, just a quick knock on the head. Job's done, puts them to sleep straight away. Really not about uh, making any animal suffer to death. Slow and painful death, I'd rather put them out of their misery quick. Painless. Because we've got to look after Mother Nature and our creatures. Keep things sustainable. But uh, importantly, not, not harm any animal in the process. Because we're very, very fortunate and incredible. Very fortunate and uh, very lucky to have the opportunity to eat such fresh seafood and produce uh, in Australia. It's, we're very privileged, that's for sure. So we've got to look after nature, its creatures, and uh, all living things. Okay, folks, we're back on dry land. Um, just after two o'clock, didn't really get on the water as early as I would have liked, unfortunately. But anyway, a good three, four hour session. Um, I lost a bit of time, I lost about an hour because I went to armchair. Um, obviously no good there, the water was just really murky, so came back in close. And uh, that's what we ended up with as a feast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These two would be the biggest ones out of the two, out of the seven. So not bad, we'll be having calamari, chippies and fresh salad tonight. So the daughter and the missus will be happy. So sit tight. We've got a two hour drive to haul back home. And then we're gonna uh, cook this up and show you guys frying up the calamari fresh. Doesn't get any better when you catch your own uh, food and cooking it up fresh that day. Doesn't get any better straight from the sea, straight to our plate this evening. And uh, the weather, believe it or not, is actually getting better as the Arvo goes on. Have a look at it. Doesn't get any better than that. 3.75 meter dart tinny did its job. Love this boat, have an absolute ball on it. Yo. Alrighty, let's haul ass, get home, wash everything down, showered, cook off, food in the belly, it's a good night. Stay tuned, next episode also, um, next week, I'll be releasing um, my best mate and I, Bjorn Kunzel, the Kunz, we'll be heading over to Ardrossan again for some squidding, some fishing, it's looking good, 
midweek adventure getaway again so keep following make sure you subscribe hit that bell for all your notifications because we're going to be continually releasing local proud content like this well we will travel obviously and go far, further and wider than just south australia but for now we're just uh hunting fishing locally check out these seagulls they know what's hanging around i better get these back in the esky on ice before one of these seagulls pluck one from right under me all right stay tuned for our cook-off coming up very shortly here we go okay guys welcome back um well, i pretty much cleaned the squid tubes fresh ready to go um i didn't film that because it's after 7 30 after getting back to the drive cleaning everything and it's a late dinner unfortunately so i'm getting through it as quickly as i can we're just going to be using tubes tonight all right in calamari rings um, because the mighty head and tentacles they are going to be baked so it's a win-win situation we get a feed and we're going to get a few bags of bait ready for the summer season so pretty straightforward we've just got a nice fresh garden salad as you can see uh, we've put in some eggs uh, some macro flour organic plain flour uh, the all-important beer batter lager okay i just find a lager tends to batter things fish um, squid a lot better i just find the flavor is a bit more wholesome and richer with a lager and uh, we're just going to whisk this together chips are in the oven and underway wife is literally minutes from being home and we've got bank um banco panko uh breadcrumbs as well that we're going to add uh, before dipping it in to deep fry so stay tuned we're going to get this underway sizzle 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 here we go what's also really important is just to get the texture right of the batter you don't want it too runny but you don't want it too thick as well so that's just about right a little bit more powder powder flour <laughs> It's been a long day, I'm exhausted. I only got about five hours sleep last night after work, trying to get everything ready, dad duties, and then uh, getting up at 5 a.m. this morning. I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm gonna sleep well tonight, that's for sure, after a good, good uh, squid feed. All right, we're just about there. Just to the texture is just about right. Yeah, that's good. That's looking real good, guys. You can have a look, see? Texture is beautiful. Now, last thing. Really important to spice it up. Cracked pepper. Absolutely. How cool are these shakers? They, uh, we got a pepper one and we got a salt one. Uh, they came from my cousin Karina from I'm Tall Poppy at uh, Nulunga there. Both would say business, get behind them. And also what I like to do is just chuck in a dash of onion salt as well. That is good. I don't whisk it together. In three. Beautiful. It's a really open you can just see that texture. Really nice. And Garnished and seasoned beautifully. A little bit of flavour to make it pop. And uh, we'll get the oil underway. And here we go. Deep fry away. Alright folks. There you have it. Fresh calamari from the sea. Straight to the plate. Same day doesn't get any better. Bit of garlic salad. Bit of chips. What do you think, love? Don't hold me to be quiet. <laughs> You're filming me already. How is it? Are you happy? Pretty good. I'm trying to. Full thumbs up for Papa. Fish? No. Fish? Squid. Calamari. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Go on, hook in. Enjoy it. Hook. Hook. Have a bite. Hook in. Go on, do the taste test. Mm, mm, mm. Yummy. What is it? Crunchy? Chicken. Ow. I can't even get... There you go. Yummy. It's like fish. No, it's not fish. 
Are you sure? Positive. All right, that's it for another episode. Thanks for joining us again. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell for all your notifications. Sayonara. And sayonara. Until the next episode, keep living free. Adios.